beta blockers, your beta blockers of your heart for your hypertensive patients. So just like we just talked about in terms of volume depleters, we're talking about actual um, the conduction system of your heart. So there's a few different ways to lower blood pressure. We can take the workload off. Well, actually, there's two different ways we can say. We can take the pressure out of the pipes themselves in terms of your diuretics and your ACE inhibitors. Just decrease the fluid volume. There's about four different ways. We just did in the last video. Then there's a way to decrease the rate of conduction in the heart. So, this is one of the ways are beta blockers. So, we have the beta blockers, the calcium channel blockers that block the calcium channels. Um, we also have um, a few other different things that we can do. Let me see, A, B, C, and D. Yeah. So, beta blockers is a negative, what's called chronotropic drug. We block that SA node from contracting too much. So, what do beta blockers do? Beta blockers block the beta adrenergic receptor. Fancy, fancy terms for um, beta 1 and beta 2. Beta 1 are these little receptors in the heart that tell the heart to contract very fast. So if we stimulate these beta receptors, we're going to contract really, really quick. Um, same thing in the lungs. Beta 2, you have two lungs. Beta 1, you have one heart. So if you stimulate beta 2 in terms of um, giving someone a beta 2 agonist, you're egging it on, then you're going to cause dilation in the bronchioles, dilation in the lungs. That's exactly what albuterol is. So if you give someone albuterol, it antagonizes beta 2, but it also antagonizes beta 1. Interesting, huh? So if it antagonizes beta 1, your heart rate is going to go up. That's why patients, after they have a breathing treatment, they become tachycardic and their heart rate is going really quick because beta 1 has been antagonized. So what do you think beta blockers do? Blockers, huh? What do they do? They block beta. Dun, da, da, right? Not too, uh, not too confusing, huh? So if we block beta, these beta excited heart rate, it's gonna decrease the heart rate when we block it. Cool. So these drugs end in LOL. Like laugh out loud. So I drew someone that was laughing out loud. So whether you're giving your patient a tenolol, metroprolol, um, those are the generic names. The names that the FDA says that we have to identify these drugs by their suffix. Because you can have the brand name like low presser or other type of brand names but we have to be able to identify what they are in terms of their suffix. That's what the uh, FDA at least said we have to do. So we do. So beta blockers, there are four Bs you have to watch out for in your patients. So the first B is bradycardia. Brady meaning your patient's heart rate drops less than 60. Now, obviously, we're trying to um, slow down your patient's heart rate. We're not trying to kill your patient here. So, 
if you're going to give your patient like four anti-hypertensive um, drugs, uh, mechani mechanisms in terms of, you're giving them four different types, you're giving them a beta blocker, a calcium channel blocker, a diuretic, um, let's say they're getting two diuretics, and they're getting a alpha-1 blocker, like catapress. That's like six different medications at 10 o'clock because that's when they take their medications. And I've had to do that before. So you're already asking yourself, oh my gosh, is that safe to give? Well, is your patient, how's the patient's blood pressure? Well, my patient's blood pressure is, um, you know, 130 over 80. Is that okay? I mean, is that okay to give? How fast is it going to drop the blood pressure? And you're so freaked out and clinical, and you're like, should I hold it? Should I not hold it? Should I give it? Should I not give it? Oh man, I don't know. Uh, well, <laughs> beta blockers, they affect beta in the heart. Okay? So it's going to affect the heart rate mainly. It's not going to drop the blood pressure too much. That's why we trend our patients. We see what the trend is. So my patient has a 130 over 80 blood pressure. Sounds like okay to me, but an hour ago, my patient had a 160 over 90 blood pressure. Uh-oh, right? So my patient dropped 30 points systolic. If my patient does the same thing in the next hour, we're talking like a hundred systolic. We probably have to hold it. What we always can do is give your patient the least um, heavy doses first. So always give your volume depleters first, like your ACE inhibitors, your diuretics, your ARBs, your potassium um, sparing diuretics like spironolactone. Give those guys first. Don't mess with these chronological or electrical conduction um, drugs until after you've given the volume depleters. I'm just saying this just in case there was a test question that says, hey, your patient dropped this many points. The doctor's standing order is to hold the blood pressure medication at 100 systolic what would you do? So whenever it's borderline or questionable on a test, you probably want to hold it. So bradycardia is the outcome effect. It's, it's the desired effect. But anything less than 60, it's not desirable. A side effect could be decreasing blood pressure. And you're like, Mike, I thought you just told me it doesn't decrease the blood pressure. It only affects that beta 1. Well, if we're decreasing stroke volume, decreasing cardiac output, a side effect could be decreasing blood pressure. So we always just add that in. Okay? You can have bronchoconstriction. Bronchi constriction. And you're probably thinking right now, what the heck, man? I thought we were talking about the heart here, not the lungs. Well, again, anytime you block beta 1, you're probably going to block beta 2 too. It's not specific. Just like if you gave albuterol, you're antagonizing beta 2, but you're also going to antagonize beta 1, causing that pulse to go up. Last one is it masks your blood sugar. So blood sugar masking is another one. So if your patient is low blood sugar, it might mask the signs and symptoms of bradycardia.